Stay tuned to the very end to find out about a special offer from this episode's guest. Picking the creative subjects, that's okay, but it's more of a a hobby type thing. You know, it's not something that you would get a career out of. I know that I'm really good at coordinating, managing type things, but it's still not creative. I'm not sitting there designing like I was at university. I don't want to just settle. I want to do something that I actually enjoy. And I want to have this business that I don't really want to have time away from because I love it so much. Hi, I'm Claire, founder of Open Stage Arts Drama and Singing Classes for Adults. For this podcast, I chat with people who have found or refound their creativity as adults. We'll explore their childhood experiences of the arts, discuss how they came to the artistic practices they now love, and consider the barriers they may have experienced between the two. We'll also explore what it is that people value and gain from their newfound artistic pursuits and how their creative lives enrich their practical, necessary, everyday lives. When you leave university with a creative degree, what do you do next? Trying to forge a career in creative arts can involve working for free and hopping from placement to placement. Then, as you start earning money and gain more responsibility, your role becomes more about managing and coordinating than actually creating. In this bonus episode, I'm talking with Lauren Deakin, who has found her place in the creative marketplace now, but only after a good deal of exploration. Hi, Lauren. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. You have struggled over the years to fulfil and really figure out what you should be doing creatively. Tell me what you do now. Okay, so now I run my own business. After working in a, as a creative in industry, I now run my own creative business, which is called Nell Creative. It's branding and marketing design using digital design and illustration. So it's bespoke to every client's needs. It's a bit of a difference. It's a bit of a change to the normal branding and marketing that you might see out there, which is really exciting. And yeah, so I'm really excited to to share that with everyone. (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. We'll talk a bit more about that. But first, let's go way back. Tell me about your childhood experience of the arts and whether you felt supported by your family or your school or the world in general. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been creative and it's all things I think that you know surround you that kind of you take note of and you just kind of grow subconsciously through that. Um, I always used to sit watching my mum on the phone and she'd always doodle and my mum always like did hand-painted wall like murals in mine and my sister's bedrooms when we were little growing up so it's really strange how that's kind of come full circle and probably subconsciously aided me now as a creative um, in my own business I would say, yeah, I was really supported. My mum and dad always pushed us, you know, do what makes you happy, what you like, what you enjoy doing. So I was very grateful for that. And I wasn't kind of pushed in a direction that I that I didn't want to go in. But at the same time, I had no knowledge of what the creative industry was. Probably, you know, growing up at school, it was always kind of Picking the creative subjects, that's okay, but it's more of a a hobby type thing. You know, it's not something that you would get a career out of. Thinking about it, I'm probably a really strong person to kind of go with something, wanting to be a creative, but not really know much about it. But obviously so consumed by be wanting to do something as a creative person that that's what's got me to where I am today. Through school, I did all the arty subjects. I did my A-levels, went to college, I did uh, textiles, art, my art foundation, and um, then I worked up to doing my degree as a textile print designer uh, for fashion and interiors initially. And I absolutely, I absolutely loved it. Moved away, which was really daunting, exciting, because I'm the eldest. No one in my family has ever done anything like that before. (laughs) But I did have a lot of support, which was really good and really, really nice, which probably helped push me. Being a creative, 
especially at uni, you're still learning, you're still experimenting, direction. I knew I wanted to do something creative. I love print, you know, drawing by hand. Obviously, growing up, I didn't really have the likes of what we've got now technology-wise. That, I think, experimenting with that at uni was something that was like, wow, this is really fun and exciting. And I kind of led myself from print digitally to screen print fabric, learning like all the time on things I liked and didn't like. And I do think as a creative, you're learning all the time. I just wouldn't mind me saying this and I'm very proud of her, but she's a she's a nurse. So, you know, academically doing something like that, she's going to leave uni, she's going to go and get her job, right? Being a creative, it's not quite like that. It's a ride and you've got to be prepared to do that ride, you know? It's been fun, it's been exciting, but it's been stressful and upsetting at times as well. There was no support when I left university. You know, it's quite a um, difficult time, I think, leaving university. You know, you've got your bursary, you've got it all going on. I was working. Um... (laughs) Because that's just, I think that's just the type of person that I am. It's just how I've been brought up. Having that kind of ethically behind me, I've always been really hardworking. Um, and I think that's probably helped me to get to where I am now in my own business, really. So you didn't know what to do or what you could do after uni? I knew, like, I went to fashion and, and textiles and I knew straight away fashion was just not for me. <laughs> Because it was like making clothes and, you know, I just thought, oh, no, it just wasn't me technically. I just didn't have the patience for it. You would do embroidery, weave, knit, print. So you try all of those things out. So I was like, right, yes, I'm going to do print. I love it. Brilliant. I went into printing for like interiors. So wallpapers, um, you know, any, any kind of interior product based really. But that kind of idea of print digitally, I mean, that's such a vast thing that you can use that skill on, you know, anything. So, yeah, leaving leaving uni, I was a visual merchandiser whilst I was at university, actually. And I think that skill has kind of lent itself to me as a designer and as a person (laughs) as well. When I left uni, I did get a have a placement working with a set designer for a huge television channel, working kind of um, set design, prop design, buying. So that aided that really well. Again, it wasn't paid for. It's almost like, right, I've got my visual merchandising. That's helping me along the way and I'm doing placements. Great. But I, 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 suddenly, you know, I'm using my own money to pay for bills, pay for food, do all of these things. I don't know how to explain it. And I'm sure people have this feeling, but something just kind of clicks. There's just something that clicks and you're like, I can't live like this anymore. And it's almost like this shift. And because you shift, you think differently. And so because of that, yeah, I I had opportunity working as a project coordinator, but weirdly enough, for a visual merchandising prop design company. So they designed when they would have like high street stores go to them and they'd be like, yeah, we want this, this and this. So we would kind of go away, project manage. Um, And one of the window displays I did was Kate Moss's window. That it was a catwalk that came out of Topshop's high street window in Oxford Street in London. So I project coordinated that, you know, it's still creative, but at the time it was just like, right, I know that I'm really good at coordinating, managing type things, but it's still not creative. I'm not sitting there designing like I was at university. I've gone to university to do this. This is what I want to do in my life. It kind of got to that point as well, like, okay, well, you've got a job now that's paying you to pay your bills and things like that. But I don't want to just settle. I want to do something that I actually enjoy. And again, I think that that takes guts to not follow the norm of society and to kind of do what you think you should do, really. Um, So I was there for, yeah, I was there for a while. um, But whilst I was working there, I got approached by another company for a kind of designer role, which I was, you know, I was blown away by my kind of first uh, junior designer job as a creative designer working in the gifting industry. 
So I was designing, you know, you wrap your tags, your bag, which was amazing, you know, going to the shop and going, oh my God, that's my design on the shelf, you know, how exciting that I finally felt like, um, yeah, that I'd arrived, you know, it was that feeling um, and I can never explain that feeling really. Something that you've wanted to do your whole life as kind of just is there in front of your eyes. And I was there for about probably about five years, something like that. And I got I, I got made redundant, which I was absolutely devastated by. It, it's kind of like that feeling of, I don't know, as a designer, I was starting to feel a little not very kind of highly thought of within industry, really. <laughs> so it didn't didn't quite sit in a really happy place and you now work for yourself you've mentioned being made redundant that might be the answer to my next question was there a catalyst or what was the catalyst for that change to to break out on your own working as a creative in industry it is about experience um you know when I left university I'm not as experienced as where I'm at now and I think it's about getting out there and doing it basically because as usual, people go, oh, have you got a portfolio? Can I see the work that you've done? You know, you can't really do that if you're not out and about doing what you, what you need to do. As a creative, it is about being out there, getting the experience. And I mean, that is a <laughs> a bridge to cross, you know, anyway, have it, being able to get out of the university and get into industry. I mean, that is that's difficult to be to be seen right to to put yourself out there and even when I started in industry I may as well have worked for free it was that horrific and you've really really got to stick to what it is that you really want to do I think I just got to a point where this sounds a bit woo woo doesn't it and I'm not that type of person at all but it's almost like that feeling of feeling ready like okay and I think I know that this isn't the right word to use, but I almost had like, I had the mick taken out of me, really. That's how I felt. And when you kind of punch so many times, you're like, all right, hang on, I'm, you can't do this to me anymore. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. I'm not going to come into industry, get another job and be treated like that again. And, it, and it, it was just almost like one of those things where something just had to give, really. And I think something just clicked it's very easy, isn't it, just to go along with what, you know, you're in industry, you've got a boss, you know, you're like, oh, I best do what they tell me to do because, well, if I don't, I might lose my job or they might think of me differently and not give me that promotion, you know, and you're always watching your back all the time, even against other people that I was working with. You know, I I kind of found my team, I you know, I felt they were my family, creative people together together. You know, you're you're a small part of a huge corporate cog. And I mean, I used to be very, very quiet when, you know, like a mouse. Um, and I think I've learned that I've got to stand up for myself because if you don't, you're going to be trodden all over. And that's kind of a sad way to think, but you do, you kind of have to just build a bit of, <laughs> build a bit of strength. I, I had to get a bit of a backbone, if I'm honest. And yeah, it's just given me that kind of oomph to just, just do it really yeah brilliant good for you how did you know what you were going to do or what your business was going to be and how you were going to find your customers so um obviously my background I knew you know designing that was something that I absolutely love my background as a as a gift designer but also um I did do a bit of branding and marketing as well I grew my kind of typography design, my illustration design. You know, if you think about designing your wrap, your bags, your tags, your cards that you buy in shops, people hand draw those things. You know, and you're buying something, what, a, a wrap of paper that cost you a pound? I mean, got a design. I would spend at least a week sometimes backwards and forwards on those prints in industry and getting them right, and you're buying them for that price. So my skills that I've brought forwards from the illustration along with branding and marketing and it's those skills that I've learned that I absolutely love that I know that I am really good at and it's something that it's different that I can offer business owners in you know service-based businesses to help them kind of 
stand out. Um, you know, your personality is what makes you stand out because there's so many people out there that do what you you do, right? Um, and it's how can you leverage yourself and your business to be different, to stand out and to be seen. And I definitely think bespoke design illustration is definitely the way the way forward, really, in helping you create more impact in your business, especially in these times, you know, in the middle of <laughs> growing out of the pandemic now. And yeah, there's lots of people that have come out of this doing their own thing, you know, running their own business or running it alongside a full time job and yeah, the way the world is changing. And I think we're buying into people for different reasons. Yes, definitely. I definitely agree. People want to see you as an individual and your individual style rather than, you know, going to a website and getting a, a faceless person from across the world to do a logo for you. We can come to you and you can do something that's about us. And well, you know, what a great way that we live, you know, Throughout this pandemic, I solely ran my business online. I mean, how amazing if we didn't have that. I've been working with people in California, Ireland, South America, UK and, and Wales, where I am. So, I mean, amazing. And now this is completely new time for me. Well, I've only ran a business in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I've been told it's no different. But, I mean, yeah, it's just new and exciting for me now. So, uh yeah, I've got other new business sectors coming on board to work with me, which is really, really exciting. I love sharing my guests' stories with you, but podcasting isn't cheap. There are hosting fees and software costs, tech to buy and time to invest in planning and editing to make sure the guests sound great and listeners hear the best content. If you would like to financially support Creativity Found, please visit ko-fi.com slash creativity found podcast going back to um what you were saying about industry and the cogs in the wheel of big industry how are you now balancing your business because you have to do all of that business side and the design and obviously you love to do the design but you still got to do You've got to get the customers. How are those two things balancing out for you? Well, I think one thing that's quite difficult is coming from a corporate background because we're taught so many things. And I don't think being a business owner now, I mean, this isn't my business isn't a corporate business and my business is run completely differently. So getting out of that mindset, you know, you must do this now, you must do this, blah, 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 must be working hard, to, you know, blah, blah. I'm not running, I don't want to run my business like that. My business is to kind of, to serve a purpose for my for my life, you know, create more freedom, enjoy my life. I want to be at home with my dog. I want to be able to go take him for nice walks. I want to be able to go work when I visit my mum and go and, you know, work from her house. And I want to be able to travel and do things and have more time, really. I, mean, I think that's what it's about, isn't it now? About creating more time, more happiness. I mean, this is a business that I want to be running for the rest of my life. And I want to have this business that I don't really want to have time away from because I love it so much. And I think that's what it's about. And I do believe that really mindset is such a big thing, you know, because I'm, I'm in the house. I mean, like most people probably through this pandemic, you're in the house nine times out of 10, you're on your own running a business, you know, keeping myself motivated and yeah, keeping my mindset really kind of, it is key really. So um, yeah, now running my business, I will only take so many people on a month just for my own kind of personal space really, which I think is really important. And yeah, just being grateful for what, how I am, where I'm at, you know, how I've just kind of discussed with you from when I was really little now I'm here running my own business. I mean, I'm my own boss. I'm telling myself what to do. And you do, I think you do have to be a motivated person and remember, remember every day why you're doing what you're doing. Because if you don't, you you know, you're just going to probably go and work for someone else because it's so, (laughs) because there are difficult days. They they can be, I know it's, I'm not going to sit here and say it's all roses. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it is amazing. I love what I do and you've got to love what you're doing. And I think that's the key to running a business. Don't, you know, run it because you enjoy it, do something that you enjoy and something will come out of that. Don't think of it from the kind of 
the money side of things. Yes, of course, I'm running a business where I want to earn more money. I want to have a better life. But if you think of it from the wrong angle, then you're going to approach it wrong. And then you're going to be working all the hours and you're not going to be enjoying what you're doing. But um, yeah, if you come from it from a different angle, you're going to enjoy what you're doing a lot more, I think. Yes. So it's very obvious that this change has affected your overall sense of well-being. You have a, a good it seems a good life balance. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think being a creative, I think we are the type of people that quite sensitive, very feeling people, you know, we we think probably think too much into things. And yeah, being able to be you and do you and be loved for who you are as a creative, it's really important. Because being a creative person, I don't care what anyone says, Being a creative person is so different to not being a creative person. You know, we think differently. Um, And you have to kind of protect that space, really, I think. Um, Yeah, and just be yourself. Brilliant. That's excellent, Lauren. So how can people contact you? So, yeah, you can find my business, Nell Creative, and you can find it on my website. I'm also on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram um, and I'm also on Google my business as well so if you type me into Google I I, uh, I come up there as well brilliant thank you so much Lauren thank you thanks for having me I've had fun <laughs> you're welcome if you are looking for a fresh new hand-drawn logo to help create your brand identity contact Lauren with the discount code creativity found 10 to receive a 10% discount on the nail creative logo package Creativity Found is an Open Stage Arts production. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please subscribe, rate and review. If you would like to contribute to future episodes, visit ko-fi.com slash creativityfoundpodcast. If you contact any of the artists featured, sign up to their workshops or buy their products, don't forget to mention Creativity Found Podcast. On Instagram or Facebook, follow at Creativity Found Podcast, where you'll find photos of our contributors' artwork and be kept abreast of everything we're up to.